Hey everybody, how you doing? Happy Friday. I'm making this as a live stream vlog because I received a text from a friend, I'm not going to say the name, uh, basically stating that they believe that my previous posts were, quote, inaccurate, unquote, uh, regarding my opposition to collecting the Measure AA tax. And you would say, okay, what's Measure AA? It was a voter initiative that went to the ballot. It was supposed to get six, well, the framers of it, the city of Oakland, primarily the mayor of Oakland, and the previous city council believed that they could get 66.67% of the vote in accordance with a state law that says that's the mark that has to be achieved to in apply a parcel tax of that type. And there was a lot of talk and advertisement about this. If the tax were approved by the voters of Oakland by, say, 66.67% or 70%, it would admit that each and every parcel each and every bit of land that you may own, your home you own, will be subject to an annual $198 tax. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but the bottom line is it's an extra tax. And for some people, just because they own land doesn't mean they can easily afford every single little uh, addition to their total property tax that they have to pay. They may have some objections. Well. To make a long story short, the vote tally came out 62% for, not 66.67%, 62%. So guess what? It lost, right? Well, there was a big hue and cry because, look, there were, there were people, including the mayor, who believed, above all else, forget the technical arguments, okay? that Oakland should do something to help parents pay and kid and, and students pay for their education. That was the whole idea. And you know, it's a laudable idea, right? But my personal argument, I'm not speaking for anybody else, is that Oakland's number one largest problem is homelessness and we aren't doing anything to solve it. We have tough sheds, but we don't have what we had prior to 2012, which was a redevelopment mechanism that assured the creation of and the maintenance of a giant affordable housing fund. When California government, Governor excuse me, Jerry Brown became governor, one of his objectives was to terminate California redevelopment. Why? Because he believed that it would save an additional billion dollars and make it that much easier to decrease or eliminate California's then gigantic budget deficit. Well, guess what? He didn't need it. But prior to the eventual Supreme Court uh, ruling that paved the way for the termination of redevelopment, the California Finance Association said, hey, you know what? Guess what? You can reduce the budget deficit and the, or eliminate it without getting rid of redevelopment, and here's how. But Governor Brown wasn't having any of that. The very tool that Governor Brown used to redevelop Oakland, redevelopment, he then wanted to take away from the rest of the state. It's like taking the punch pole away. But again, because he believed that it was going to stop the state's then gigantic budget deficit. To Governor Brown's credit, he did not only eliminate California's giant deficit, but send it once again into fiscal prosperity, a situation it hadn't known for some time. But the bottom line is it came at a cost. Cities like Oakland were not able to use their once giant affordable housing funds. Oakland's affordable housing budget was at $111 million in 2011. It was at oh, just over $100 million, excuse me, $90 million the year before, 
and 80 million the year before that. It was continuously growing. Today, the Oakland City Council, at least the one that was intact last year, bragged about having an additional 55 million. When I heard one council member say that, I laughed. I said, you gotta be joking, you have to be kidding me. So, as you can tell by my going on for some minutes about this, homelessness is the problem. It, it really is. And what I wrote in text to my friend was this, there's zero excuse for the position we're in today in terms of having a giant homeless problem, zero. Moreover, and as one who created the computer model for the Coliseum Redevelopment Survey Area in 1987, it was called the Area Redevelopment Economic Model, and also had the Emeryville and San Francisco Redevelopment Agencies as clients, I can tell you that we had much greater revenue flexibility then. What is equally massively disturbing is the reluctance to use Senate Bill 628 Bill, which was passed approximately four years ago, to employ tax increment financing today. As I showed Oakland Athletics President Dave Caval via spreadsheet, he could generate over $85 million directly for affordable housing at Jack London Square. I steadfastly hold that homelessness is the problem we must focus on. Moreover, its solutions provide the driver to the answers to the problems that you and I'm saying this to my friend, are concerned with. You must understand that my thinking is governed by system dynamics. In a complex system, one looks for the main drivers of the problem, then repairs them. We have two main driver problems in, in this instance. The first one is high housing costs. The second one is a lack of basic sustainable jobs. Our country has a 34% underemployment rate, and that is 35% in Oakland and San Francisco. That means roughly one out of every three people is making less than they should. That's an alarming development, folks. We we got to that place by letting basic jobs go overseas without a plan for economic redevelopment. We also got here by failing to apply technology and money to develop it to upgrade basic industry and to the environmental levels and standards of today. Not surprisingly, the world demand for steel has only increased, while the United States has decreased its market share dramatically, I might add, in the supply, in supplying, in creating the supply to meet the demand. The climate change problem is really born of overpopulation. Indeed, even the Green New Deal acknowledges this. Fortunately, the overall rate of population growth has continued to slow to where it is today, approximately 1.1%. As far back as 1977, when I was first introduced to system dynamics, this thinking expressed in the Limits to Growth book, that was population growth would slow to zero by 2000, was notable then. But guess what? It is still at 1.1% today, which means we haven't reached zero population growth which means this, sadly and truthfully, it means this, that we have too many people for our planet. That's the real discussion and it's a scary one. The question is how do we get out of this? Well, yeah, prayer for one, and the continued advance of market economic systems around the world, but with technology sharing applied to industry for environmental concerns for another. Those and a plan for planetary colonization will help us deal with the problem. Why? As I discovered in my research paper for the late San Francisco Mayor Ed Lee when he was over the Human Rights Commission in 1993, lower birth rates come with increased rates of education. That need for more education is driven by growth in industry. I prefer a market mechanism because it's more efficient and effective and promotes democracy. In other words, a better educated world population tends to lead to lower birth rates. So there is my reason for my position, but I do thank you, my friend, for allowing me to present my case. All right, so that is why I took the position that, look, 
I'm not saying it's not important to help Oaklanders finance education. It is. But the simple fact of the matter is, much of that money will be used for those families that have children. What about those families that don't? And also, we're not paying attention, and we need, in my view, to be forced to pay attention to the resolution of the homeless problem. I mean, from where I sit, Oakland is consistently made to look horrible. Now, the fact of the matter is it's changing rapidly, but let's take look at that change. Over at 51st and Broadway, we have a condominium complex that has units that go for, get this, over $8,000 a month. Okay, $8,000 per month at 51st and Broadway in Oakland. $8,000 per month. Eight times 12 is $64,000. So think about it. You would need to make, six times three is 18. Well, let's just round it off real quick. You have to have an income of $200,000 a year to begin to think about easily affording that complex, all right? That's insane. That is absolutely insane. And yet the mayor of Oakland spoke in favor of that development, which I believe now is open. If you were making $200,000 a year and you want to have a small place, go over to 51st and Broadway, all right? So the bottom line is we're in a position where the affordable housing, and a lot of people don't understand what affordable housing is, is necessary. But let me tell you what affordable housing is. Affordable housing is where you, the developer, receive a subsidy to fill in that gap in terms of rents between what you want to charge at market level and what it is desired that you charge so that your units are affordable to the most people in a city like Oakland. Affordable housing is not a handout. Whoever might think that has zero idea what they're talking about. This isn't welfare housing or anything. No. If you think that, you are severely mistaken and extremely misinformed, particularly in the California context. Do you realize that the average cost of a house in San Francisco alone is well over $1 million? Again, well over $1 million. There are only a handful of people who can afford that. And what's happening is that the people who are buying it up don't even live in San Francisco or Oakland. They live someplace else. Some, some maybe live in Russia. Some live in Bangladesh. Some live in Hungary, okay? So the bottom line is, again, we have a gigantic homeless problem because people can't afford the homes. This has nothing to do with handouts at all. It has to do with giving developers an incentive to build housing in such a way that the rent is lower so that you can afford it just on a basic job. We have people now you can go around and ask people, well, do you, how many of you work for Uber? Just like a random group. And out of eight people, you're likely to have two or three raise their hands. Not that work for, but have, you know, are signed up to drive. That's alarming. So what happens if, for some particular reason, these companies run out of money? Or stop operating? Or, worst case, Implement the very technology that will allow the use of the driverless car, which means no jobs. So a gigantic, a gigantic pillar that is supporting our jobs economy would shatter like that. It's time to stop this nonsense. Start economic planning and return to in California, the redevelopment system that we had that allowed the construction of affordable housing. Again, for those of you who just don't seem to get it, I'm not talking about a welfare state. We've always had affordable housing. We've always had a system where there was an incentive 
for a developer to build, much like it was we have a system of incentives for farmers to farm. There's no difference. All right, so I'll be back uh, with another focus, but I wanted to, to, in particular, get this out and note it. Thank you. And again, we don't need to collect Measure AA. It is alleged to be illegal, and the Oakland City Council shouldn't be moving the goalposts. I've said that before. But this time, I've given you my overall raison d'etre. And for anybody who opposes, you are more than welcome to write your opposition on my blogs. Oakland News Now, Oakland News Online, Zinni62.com, any of my city blogs, including Oakland Focus. You'll get better exposure than anywhere else. See ya.